Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to Listen Up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies. Phil and Ryan on Listen Up. Thank you, KK. Oh, my goodness. We already know, Ryan, they're waiting for predictions at the end, like always. We know the drill by now. Ryan, one of the best, and currently, if you talk about nowadays, one of the best rivalries in women's college hoops. And that is Notre Dame and UConn, Ryan. Saturday, what, Saturday, 8 o'clock on Fox, you told me, oh, my goodness, I can't wait. And we all know that you can't wait. Ryan, how's it going to turn out? Yeah, it, it definitely should be a fun game. I definitely can't wait to watch it. Definitely one of the ones that we've had circled on our calendars for quite some time now. But the last time this UConn team played an opponent – ranked inside the top 15, was, of course, against Texas all the way back on December 3rd. So it definitely will be a test for UConn, but it does help that they are home. And UConn has virtually been perfect the whole season at home. Notre Dame is 15-4 and four on the year. They just got upset tonight by Syracuse, which snapped their four-game win streak, and that dropped them all the way back to sixth place in a very tough, ACC conference. UConn's already beaten uh, two teams from the ACC, North Carolina and Louisville, and lost to NC State earlier in the year. So pretty, pretty familiar uh, with the ACC conference. Fighting Irish team, they've been battling through some injuries, just like a lot of other teams, but especially UConn. Uh, Olivia Miles has not played a game this season due to her knee injury. She suffered all, all the way back last February. Senior guard Jenna Brown has also not played a game for Notre Dame this season. Sonia Citron was out for a couple months before recently returning to the lineup. And sophomore guard Cassandra Prosper has not played since November due to a foot injury. So so definitely a, a couple injuries that Notre Dame's been battling through throughout uh, this season. But on the good news for the Fighting Irish, freshman guard Hannah Hidalgo has been holding down the fort for Notre yeah. Dame, and she's bursted onto the scene quite quickly in her first season, averaging Freshman. 24 points per game. Uh, that yeah. That's fourth in the country, so pretty good from the freshman. Also leads the team in assists and steals. Uh, junior guard Maddie Westbell continues to put up consistent numbers, averaging 14 points and just under a team leading 10 rebounds per, per game. Graduate student Anna DeWolf has had a, a, she's been a nice addition from the transfer portal, averaging about 10 points per game. And I'll definitely be watching 6'4 junior forward Kylie Watson, Kylie Watson battling Aaliyah for the rebounds down low. Um, Notre Dame, pretty good rebounding team. They, they have a lot of size uh, and, of course, some great talented players as well. It's going to be the biggest uh, test in a while, like I mentioned, for UConn. But I do think they can handle it. I, I think it's going to be um, th their defense that comes up clutch. I I'm sure Nika Mule will be guarding Hidalgo, usually guarding the, the best player or the top scorer for the, opponent te for the opposing team. So uh, I would bet that Nika is going to give her a lot of trouble trying to score the ball for most of the night. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the upset um, just recently because, boy, has Notre Dame had a time with Syracuse because you mentioned they lost uh, to them, which was correct, obviously. 79-65, they just got upset recently, um, their most recent game. But, Ryan, if you take a look back, I just saw on New Year's Eve, they lost again to Syracuse, 86-81. to So, with that said, obviously, we're not going to take them lightly uh, Saturday night. I don't think anyone is, right? I think UConn's going to turn it up. The arena will be packed. Uh, what'd you tell me? Gample, I believe? Yeah, I, I believe it is in Gample, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That place would be rocking. Probably not a seat to be found, right? We know how, how it is. We just witnessed that, Ryan, back in November. So, good times, right? Um, now, we'll say this. This is probably not all that true, but hopefully with this most recent loss that Notre Dame has suffered against Syracuse, Hope, just hopefully, right? Keep your fingers crossed that UConn is catching Notre Dame at the right time, you know? Uh, because if you take a look back, I mean, like I said, um, Notre Dame has been 
putting up fire, you know, and somehow, some way, they have to uh, stop the the very talented star freshman that you mentioned. Um, again, for Notre Dame, that is. Um, again, I just want to make uh, some things clear about um, Aaliyah Edwards. You know, I took some heat for the last episode. Some of the comments I made on, man, look, not as good as what? The breakout season last year, all right? I love Aaliyah Edwards, all right? Don't get me wrong. Let me tell you what I was talking about, Ryan, was maybe more uh, pull-up jumper shots, you know, maybe not directly under the rim shot, under the basket shots, because people were right. She's getting guarded sometimes by uh, two or three ladies, right, under the basket. So let's just throw that out there now. And uh, again, yes, yeah, she is having a good season, but uh, would, would like to see her put up more than maybe some mid-range shots, get her going from mid-range and not under the basket at all times, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and I think for this game too, she's she's definitely gonna have to maybe do that. I think maybe have a tough tough time scoring, uh, of course, against the against the six four uh, forward. But uh, you know, I think for UConn most of the season, it's just been a, a huge team effort, especially during the win streak. I mean, everybody's contributing. A lot of yeah. players have been getting better and better as the season has gone on, which is always good to see. We talk about the freshman Hidalgo uh, for Notre Dame. And, of course, we have some pretty good freshmen over here as well for UConn. So uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, but like I said, I think UConn is going to handle themselves pretty well. They, they have been during this whole win streak so uh, i'd be very surprised now now of course you know maybe uconn starts the game a little slow like they have been recently but i would expect uconn to, to ride the ship like they always do stay consistent and and eventually um outlast the, the fighting irish all right here we go uh comments and then <laughs> predictions what everyone is waiting on no secret by now ryan lindsey matthews thanks phil for mentioning uconn speed it's one of the things any team can do, and it's an incredible weapon. Often, by the fourth quarter, many teams are worn out, and UConn is still the energizing bunny. Yeah, I just don't, I don't get it, Ryan. Every game, you know, it seems like that, you know, the fatigue sets in for the opposing team, um, and and it's just not ever any season. Not one player on this UConn Huskies team. Credit the coaches, probably the training staff, getting them hyped up and ready to go, but the whatever they're eating, right? Whatever eating, drinking, how they practice, they it's just the energy is there. You know, it, it's just there. I, I think it's really how they practice, you know, getting all the way started in June, July and the summer workouts and just working out every single week. Uh, all the preparation that goes goes into everything before the season starts and and all these women uh, are you know really really in shape and can play at that speed for the whole entire game which uh, is very evident when when we do watch them uh, every single game uh, usually Yukon uh, no matter how much they're up or down in a game, usually their pace and energy is always there throughout the whole entire game. So that's always something, um, you know, that, that's really fun to watch from this team uh, for the past couple seasons that that we've been covering them, of course. But I think that that goes a long way, um, you know, battling, especially the, the tougher top tier teams is their speed and the pace they play with because, uh, you know, it's really hard for for a lot of teams. There's not too many teams out there that that can really keep up with the, with the pace that UConn has. Uh, let's go over to Jason D'Amico. He goes first. CC's collision was a flop through and through. I lost some respect for her after that. You can't tell me that a basketball player whose job it is every night to avoid defensive players could not avoid that collision. She even put her arms out to push off. That was some pathetic LeBron level acting right there. Whoa, you hardly ever see Jason uh, with these comments, right? But hey, you know, opinions, opinions matter sometimes, well, all the time. Caroline's situation, although heartbreaking, is the right move. Phil, I don't agree about Edwards. She is playing alone down in the paint while getting absolutely hacked all game long, who's only uh, Res respite is a struggling freshman who is still learning the system. She is doing a great job and her numbers show it. Great recap, fellas. Peace. Well, again, Ryan, 
I think we can all agree not like the breakout year, but you don't have to be that great all the time, right? Again, scoring wise, um, especially we'll, we'll I, let me put it this way: we'll see, we, we'll see Saturday night. Yeah, and I think uh, you know, in terms of Aaliyah, I think you know, putting up pretty consistent numbers throughout the season. Uh, you know, even though if she she doesn't have. The, the, quite the numbers because we, we talked about it during the off season that it's going to be really hard for her to uh, put up the same numbers she did last season. Uh, but, you know, I, I think Aaliyah, if she keeps uh, almost getting a double double every single night, uh, that's pretty good because not, not a lot of players in the country can con consistently uh, all pretty much average a double double every single night. So, you know, I think Aaliyah will be fine for the rest of the season, but the Caitlin Clark uh, situation is what I, what I was trying to remember from that comment. It, it's definitely interesting. There, there's a lot of angles on it. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was a flop or not, but uh, d definitely, a, definitely a pretty, pretty interesting debate. All right. How about one more? Let's go over to the disruptive one. Been a while since I heard from him or read his comment. I'm a Nika critic. I have been for years. Well, like I said, Ryan, everyone has their opinion. I think UConn fans have mostly always gotten carried away with the pra with their praise towards her. And that praise has, in my opinion, come at the expense of other UConn players. I think she has gotten better. I'm going to give her credit. I think she would have scored four points in a game like this last season. This year, she hits some big shots and helps bust the game open. Can Nika have a good shooting double-figure scoring game against a team like Notre Dame or South Carolina, though? That's what I want to see. That's what I am skeptical of. I, I've been really surprised by Nika in, in a good way this season because I, I never really expected her to, to transform into the scorer that she is right now. And she talked about how she worked really hard uh, on her shot in general, but specifically the outside shot. And you can see the past couple games here, I'd say probably the last five games that, that I've really noticed it, uh, where she she's definitely a lot more confident shooting the three ball. Uh, and she's, make, she's making a lot of them too, which is really good to see. It's definitely been helping the UConn offense. We're starting to see the opposing team uh, come up closer to, to guard Nika on the outside shot. Uh, so it definitely changes things for uh, for the UConn offense a lot. Uh, definitely, I, I think the assist numbers are down a little bit, but it, it was hard. It was going to be hard for Nika to to put up the the same assist numbers that she did last year. But uh, yeah, her transformation in terms of her shot uh, has been pretty uh, pretty cool to watch throughout the season. All right, predictions, Ryan. Uh, predictions on listen up. I am going. Oh, wow. Oh. UConn wins it Saturday night on Fox, Ryan. Uh, I'm going 86, 86, 72, 86, 72, UConn over Notre Dame. Well, I feel like I keep saying the, the, the same thing pretty much for most of these games that they're going to be close and then UConn ends up winning by about 20. But yeah. I, I just can't see UConn getting a huge blowout win in this one. But I do think UConn prevails uh, with the home crowd, crowd behind them. Uh, so I'm going to go UConn by a score of 83-75. All right, it's going to be fun. I can't wait. You know, they talked about the other night, Ryan, um, on an NBA game show uh preview talk rather the nba crew um they said we're always talking about that they were just talking about the uh, previewing an nba game it was on the other night got it got me thinking right uh we're always they said they're on the set and they're saying we're always talking about star players star players a uh, legendary players future hall of fame players and i got to thinking i'm like you because they were talking about keys to winning and and you know people they want to just beat around the bush sometimes too much or just try to sugarcoat one thing or say, well, you know, and we do all about how great the UConn freshmen are this year and on and on. Right. And again, we could be surprised. We could see, you know, Aaliyah Edwards totally, even though she's had great games this season, totally eat my words up, you know, and just put on a show uh, Saturday night. Uh, we could have the freshmen step up again, like we've seen so often, but my two cents, I was like, I have to tell Ryan to see what he says. My two cents, man, 
big clutch games like this one, obviously the numbers, you all want to talk about numbers, you and everybody else, you know, you want to tell Phil about numbers. Well, there's a number beside Notre Dame. There's a number beside UConn for a reason. I know we don't get it too much into rankings, Ryan, but uh, for a reason, 15, eight, right? Um, I think really, man, it, it, it comes down to these kind of games specifically. Um, page backers, you know, I, I really, you want to talk about, you know, clutch players, uh, with, with all the, she, she has the stats, she has their, the awards, um, uh, you know, if for some odd reason she gets shut down Saturday night, uh, man, if you take her out of the game, and be, the reason I was saying this only in these big time, big time matchups, all games are big, but you know, this one has a special meaning behind it. Um, we've seen a lot of games where she hasn't really scored that often. She's still been a big part of this team, but I think, man, if you take Beckers out of games like this, it's trouble. It might, again, great team overall, but games like this, Ryan, don't take Beckers out of the game where, oh, oh watch out. Well, well Paige has scored, I believe, 20 20- plus points in, in four or five straight games for UConn, now averaging 20 points on the season. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we talked about how she started out a little slow, kind of wondering if we'd ever see the same Paige Beckers or or uh, like we did in, in, during during her freshman season, I guess you could say. Uh, and she, she's definitely lived up to that uh, and brought it back a little bit since having uh, to, to sit on the sidelines all those days with the injuries. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely nice to see Paige being uh, just Paige again and playing like yeah. we we all know that she can. So, uh, you know, she's been showing up for for mostly all these games this season. So hopefully she does. Uh, but I, I I know she will in in front of this home crowd at Gamble. Uh, definitely, I you know honestly, I'm expecting probably uh, another twenty point uh, performance from Paige. So so we'll we'll have to see. They need everyone, right? They need everyone, but especially they need buckets. How many buckets will they get Saturday night, Ryan? I will see you for a later than usual game recap Saturday right here on Listen Up. Ryan, turn your television station, program it right now. Pre-game on Fox. Go ahead and program it. I'll let you go. Program that TV right now. Hit the pre-record button, whatever you have to do. 8 o'clock on Fox. Phil and Ryan, listen up.